Just like a broken record, same old songs of accusation play. I courage you to speak the truth. Just look at all your failures and mistakes. And if they really knew you, there's no way they could love you anyway. Oh, oh, oh. but I will fight the lies with the truth. The Send Help Podcast. A podcast and a lifeline for moms who are stuck in the trenches of mommyhood, bringing them encouragement through Jesus, laughter, and sisterhood. (laughs) Hey, Christy. What's up, Amanda? (laughs) Oh, man. I bet you guys missed us. I know. Man. It's crazy. It is crazy. (laughs) We've been, you've been all over the world. I've been all over Texas. Boom. Boom. That means a lot of car driving. It's a lot of car driving (laughs) with the wee ones. Man, I know that we've missed. It was for good reasons so that we could keep our sanity. (laughs) But I also know that there are a lot of people expectantly waiting for your return. (laughs) (laughs) That cracks me up. Amanda has returned. (laughs) To hear all about your trip. Yeah. To the Kenya. To the Kenya. (laughs) To the Kenya. Because we know it was amazing. I think that we've already seen some pictures. I saw a really great picture of a giraffe. Yeah. Like I've only, I've really only posted like, I don't know, maybe six photos total of the trip. I haven't, I hadn't even finished editing like our big camera photos but I haven't even known what to post. Right? Yeah. I would think that you wouldn't know about a lot of things <laughs> after a trip like that. <laughs> yeah. We've been we went back for exactly one week because we got back Saturday afternoon. Right. Yeah. Last Saturday. And it's been a whirlwind because we went straight into straight into a healing service at church, which was a big deal. We had to make sure we were there for that. And then I went back to work and Josh <laughs> started school, started first grade. <laughs> so like Monday through Wednesday, running around, getting him ready. And then back to school Thursday and back to work for me Thursday. Right. So it's been, it's been a lot. <laughs> it's been so much. I, I, I think I had a total breakdown on Friday. Well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> I was the first day that I was by myself. Yeah. So I was trying to. Oh, my um, goodness. After a trip like that, having yeah. a first day to yourself to decompress and process things would be so overwhelming. I have not completely processed. Well, no. No. Because. You probably won't for well, a little while. Yeah. My aunt died while we were in right. Kenya. And um, that happened on a Thursday, and then we got back on Saturday. So from Thursday to Saturday, I pushed it aside and didn't mm-hmm. think about it because I, I couldn't. <laughs> I right. had you had, I had a like lot of a half cry with people, yeah, yeah. And then we had to run back out into doing like the last two days of the camp that we were doing in um, Elderit, and it was. It was amazing, but it <laughs> was really intense <laughs> to try and not process or think about it at the same time as trying to focus and and really give my all right to the trip and to the people on it. And to their credit, my teammates were amazing and they gave me space, but they also checked on me. So the people that really knew <laughs> what was going on um, were really precious and checked on me and once we were finished with camp they were like okay you can feel now and i'm like i can't feel yet i can't feel yet i can't do it (laughs) there's still a whole plane ride and all of those things yeah and there's no feelings yeah no no No. feels no our trip leader kept looking at me was like are you okay i'm like no he's like at least you're being honest Um, well, you're but, on a so, mission trip with yeah. the Holy Spirit. You have to be honest. Right. So Monday was her funeral. So it was just, it was, it's been crazy. So I've been trying to process Aunt Joy Pat dying and the Kenya trip and, and Josh going to first grade. It's mm-hmm. just, so Friday. 
Right. Yesterday, I just like I know I Marco Poloed you in tears because I'm like I don't know how to talk about this trip <laughs> because I don't yet. Yeah, but I'm gonna try tonight. <laughs> Just duck dive in, Manda. Yeah. I have never been on a mission trip mm-hmm. unless you count Atlanta. <laughs> it, it Not does Atlanta. Count. It was Alabama. <laughs> it was an A word. It was an A word. Whatever that Down A there word on is. the coast. <laughs> Atlanta's probably not on the coast. But Alabama is. Anyway... <laughs> I didn't do great in geography. I went with some college students to Alabama and Florida. Same trip. Same day. Anyway. Anywho. Anyway. No, what I was going to (laughs) say. I've never been on. I don't want to say a real mission trip. I don't want to downplay the. um, There are a lot of different kinds of mission trips. Yes. Yes. I've never left the country international mission trip yes How's that? i've never been on an international trip mm-hmm. but every single time that i hear stories about those trips i think oh my goodness why do we not maybe i don't know if we don't allow it yeah why do we not have holy spirit encounters like that here yeah that's what I think. Every single time I hear the stories, I'm like, so if I go on a mission trip to that shelter in Florida, how come we did not have Holy Spirit encounters like I hear about? Yeah. Like, why do we not lay hands on people when we walk down the street in New Orleans? True. When we stop for beignets, y'all. Yeah. Because <laughs> you passed three homeless people right? on the way here. To get to the beignets. <laughs> yes. Hello, homeless and person. We're on a doctors. mission trip, yeah. but I want my beignet. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's amazing because uh, outside of America, you have people that don't have everything and they can't buy happiness. And in America, we can. And I have often said it. I was real mad at Jesus for making me move back to Hudson Oaks, Weatherford area. Because I was in Africa at the time. I was in South Africa. And um, Hurricane Katrina was hitting. And I knew I was supposed to come home. Which meant I knew that I wasn't going to be staying in Africa. Um, And I had really thought about it. (laughs) And I really was thinking, like, this is it. This is it. I'm finally going to stay in Africa. Um, But I knew my family was coming from... New Orleans and Mississippi to stay with my family. And I knew this was, I need, I, I, the Lord was just like, you need to go home. You need to go home. You have to go home. And I'm like, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back to Parker County, right? (laughs) Where everyone can buy everything they need. And they don't, you can't tell somebody that can buy everything they need that they need Jesus. Right. And then once we get into the degrees of needing Jesus, it's like, oh, I'm good. I've gone to church my whole life. Right. So we've gotten, (laughs) oh, this is a heavy subject. Right. But our belief in America and our belief in the modern church and what God can do is so small Compared to what God can do when you take those governors off. Right. You let the All engine our, really um, go. <laughs> right. All of our um, conveniences make it really easy to not depend on God. It's like putting a 60 mile an hour speed limit or governor on a Lamborghini. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and that's such a, pedestrian way of saying it but it's the best it's the best picture that I can give this you know like <laughs> this on the spur of the moment is that what your life can be with like and what the Lord can do and that what 
when you invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of your relationship with the Lord and your belief (laughs) and you take those limits off of him. Right. Like you can go 250 miles an hour in, you know, I don't know, 10 seconds, five seconds. I don't know. I don't know what Lamborghini. I just know that they go fast. They go real fast. And if you only were ever able to drive the most 60 miles an hour in a Lamborghini, you'd be like, what is the point of having a Lamborghini? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But that's kind of like Holy Spirit in America versus Holy Spirit anywhere outside of America. (laughs) Um, Because like in the places that I've been, at least, um, the poverty and the need is so huge um, that they believe when you say God's going to heal you, that they're going to heal you, that God's going to heal you, period. And it's going to happen right right now because it's your only option. Right. <laughs> it's either healing from the Lord or, or you die. You die. Or you just deal with the, the fact that you don't have this leg right. or that you can only breathe out of one side of your lungs, <laughs> you know, or that you just can't see or you can't hear um, because healthcare is not necessarily an option for most people. Um, and so the need is greater. And that's really the only way that I can explain it. And then also like inviting the Holy Spirit to be a part of things because we don't do that on a regular basis in America. Right. And I think a lot of times when we do, he has to tiptoe in Mm -hmm. or we get scared and run. Right. Like when the lights come on and yeah, the mouse runs away. God isn't represented as a house cat. He's represented as a lion. Right. (laughs) Ooh, man, I'm glad he's not a house cat. Yeah. Wouldn't that be scary? But we put him in a house cat box. We do. That's the that's the best way to explain it. Like in the most like layman's terms, because I don't have bigger terms. Because we're layman. All I know is exactly. (laughs) All I know is that. Most of our teachings that we brought from America or from like even to our awesome Kenya team was Holy Spirit. (laughs) And um, like, I don't know, in the last couple of years and our church is really going through a transformation where the Holy Spirit is a huge part of what we believe, what's preached now. Right. Like we're really... You know, like we're having a prophetic conference. Like that's incredible that that's happening because <laughs> that is not who we were two years ago. One year ago, we weren't like it's all changed. Like I think back to even where I was 10 years ago coming out of YWAM and my depth of knowledge of the Holy Spirit and understanding of like what he can do is different. I don't know. I just can't imagine going back to taking the Holy Spirit out. It's like a whole depth that I didn't know about. <laughs> right. You know? Anyway. Let's introduce Tim. Hey, Tim. Hi. You were also in Kenya. I was. I was right there with you. <laughs> it was amazing. It was. I, too, had never been out of the country, well, off the continent. I'd been to Mexico on a mission trip. Yeah. But, you know, right back to the Holy Spirit, I feel like there's a hunger. That's what it is. That's the word, hunger. There you go. There's a hunger for it. But I'm also sensing that it's beginning to grow here in America, at least here in Parker County where I have, where I am. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying about our, our church is now exploring Holy Spirit, whereas two years ago it was actually never mentioned from the pulpit. Right. That's what I was going to say earlier, was that America, especially Parker County, is like one of the hardest mission fields that there is because you can't tell people that have been in church their whole life that they need something. Right. <laughs> right. They're already they're already safe, so they're good. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the whole 
It's the ticket to heaven thing. Yeah. <laughs> the get out of hell free card. Right. And so that's all you need and that's all there is, but there's so, so much, much more. more. Oh, that was beautiful, you guys. Right. Christy and Tim often say the same things and think the same things because they have the same brain. We're the same person. Basically. Basically. <laughs> While we were in Kenya, as you guys know, my parents had Josh. Yeah. And, and they um, went on a cruise, They right? went on a cruise to Mexico, <laughs> where Josh swam with the dolphins. Aww. And my parents have said over and over again that it was one of... The, my mom said that she even told her mom's in touch group that it was the best decision that they ever made was to take Josh on that cruise. Wow. I know. So... <laughs> on our second week, we were not in Nairobi anymore. We had driven to Eldoret. It's weird because I want to say Eldoret because that's how it's spelled, but everybody in Kenya calls it Eldoret, which still doesn't feel right in my mouth. You want it to be Spanish, but mm-hmm. it's not. It's <laughs> not. It's Kenyan. <laughs> we were there and we were putting on a youth camp. It was kids. I'm going to say like the youngest kid that I met was like, 11 preteen yeah see when 12. you said kids camp i was like vds no and you're saying no. the ages i'm like no that's like a teen camp yeah yeah it was that's mostly accurate. it was a youth camp yes yeah yes youth. yeah it was youth it so was the 11 youth. through maybe 20 <laughs> 23 yeah 23 yeah. Yeah. yeah wow most of my babies are is 23 so we're 18 and up. a youth over well there? I no. mean, they're young, Word. but it wasn't like everyone was 23. It was like, if we're talking about the extreme range yeah. of okay. the okay. ages, 11 So there wasn't like a large The majority of were probably year 16 to 18. Okay. Anyway, while we're in Eldorit, I don't know. Am I saying that right, Tim? Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, the night we got there, I got... I got, I think it was altitude sickness. I'm pretty sure that that's what it was. Cause we like went up like 4,000 feet in six hours. And, um, so the next day my body was just like freaking out and I stayed home. I stayed home sick. <laughs> oh, it was a rough day. <laughs> um, I got a Marco Polo from my mom. That Josh was in the emergency room because he was vomiting blood. Boy. Mm. Yeah. Not what you want to hear no. when you're, when you're no. 8,000 miles yeah. away. No, and I'm also sick at this time. Yeah. Right? So I had been throwing up my guts and I couldn't breathe. <laughs> Hence the altitude. Um, And I'm down. I'm super down. And then I get this Marco Polo from my mom. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh, he's got an IV the whole nine yards. He's super dehydrated. And my mom's downplaying big time. Mm -hmm. She's so down. She's like, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. (laughs) They they just think it's a stomach thing from the, you know, that you get from cruises. It's fine. It's fine. (laughs) And like, she's really trying to reassure me that everything is okay. He drank the water while swimming with a dolphin. He's right. fine. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was something intestinal. I knew at that moment, I have to stay home. <laughs> I have to stay home. I got ticked off at the devil for coming after our families. <laughs> right. So I just started like warrior worship when you just pace back and forth mm-hmm. and you're mad, but you're like, I am going to push in and do a duck dive, right. but I'm standing cause I got a pace. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not in water. <laughs> Truth. But yeah, I mean, it was basically a duck dive moment though, because I'm going to just like duck my head in yeah. and just go into this wave. Cause right. it's going to crash down no matter what. So, um, just really like calling on the Holy Spirit. I definitely was praying in my prayer language. <laughs> I can't stop. That's the thing. Since I started, really, like it wasn't like I've been. I've had a prayer language for for a while. Fourteen years. Yeah. yeah since YWAM. I mean, that was when I first received it. I just don't want to. I don't want to alienate a bunch of you. 
but I can't not talk about this stuff because it's a huge part of my life. I feel like I want to say to my our audience, I love you. And if you have questions about it, please write me because we'll talk about it <laughs> big time. Um, but I was pacing back and forth, just um, kind of <laughs> yelling out my prayer language <laughs> To say it was a tangible Holy Spirit moment, like where you can feel the Holy Spirit's presence, like so thick is an understatement. It was sometimes it was like you couldn't even breathe because it was like, you know, when it's so humid outside, you think you could swim through the air because the humidity Mm -hmm. is so dense. That's how it felt. Like you could. So it's like you were in Galveston. You could ingest it. Yeah. (laughs) But it was the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't bad. It was good. (laughs) Like, I was still sweating. But (laughs) But you guys, like, what happened, what my personal experience in Kenya was just praying for people to be healed, and they got healed. I did nothing except pray and had straight-up faith that it was going to happen. But also, it was more of a, like okay, let's see what we can do. Like, <laughs> let's see what the Holy Spirit's going to do today. You know, it wasn't, I mean, it was just like, and most every time I was, I was like, do you want to do this? Do you really want to see what he can do? Do you want to see? Let's do it. You want to try? You know, like, are you ready? Let's do it. <laughs> um, But the first lady that got healed um, had been deaf in her one ear her whole life since she was born. And um, while we were there, (laughs) like we prayed for it to be healed. And then she said that she started to hear a clicking in that ear. And I was like, do you want to pray some more? And she was like, yeah, I was like, let's do it again. So we prayed again. And at this time I'm getting really excited. Right. (laughs) Cause I'm like, this is happening right now. And um, so we went outside because it was really loud where we were. So we went outside and um, she was like, it it feels like there's a have, like there's cotton or something in my ear, but I can hear it's like muffled. Like I have like an earplug in and I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Let's pray again. (laughs) And so we'd pray again and then she could hear more and then we'd pray again and then she could hear completely. And it was insane. And I was just like, what? And she's like, oh my gosh. And here's the thing, guys. I haven't seen someone physically healed where I can't refute it, like because it's evident. Right. It's not something that you need an x ray for, or you need right. a blood test for. Like, I haven't seen that happen since YWAM. Right. And that only happened a couple times. And it was never because it was just me praying for someone, it was because it was like a group effort. Right. And it was like, we did it, you know? <laughs> um, but this was different. And I mean, I pray for healing for people all the time. I pray for healing for myself all the time. And I don't understand why it happens these times and then it doesn't happen. Like I've been asking the Lord for the gift of healing even. Like just like, Lord, come through me, <laughs> you know, like show up, please. Not like I say, I hate to say show up because we say that a lot. Like, oh, God showed up. It's like, no, he was there. He was there. Yeah. You just invited him in. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, she just it decided make, to acknowledge him. He decided him to do right. something. Yeah. So it was a huge faith builder for me because I didn't know when I prayed for Susan's ear if it was really going to happen, but I sure was not going to not try. Right. You know, and it was not because I prayed for her. It wasn't anything that I did. It was completely the Holy Spirit. And the same thing happened with a woman that was losing her sight. Crazy, crazy thing. Like (laughs) she came up and she's like, I need prayer for finances because I have to get my eyes fixed because they're starting to, I say it's going away. I'm going blind. And I'm like, I'll absolutely pray for finances for you, but do you want to pray for healing too? You want to get healed? I was just like, you want to get healed? And she's like, yes, absolutely. I'm like, all right. Really? Because we're going to do this. And she's like, yeah. Okay. I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's pray. Let's see what, let's see what God does. And again, we went outside because we had to get into better lighting and we found something she could read. And 
we, I mean, we tested and prayed five times and I pulled somebody else in on the last one. Cause I was like, we need more manpower. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it wasn't cause we needed more manpower. It wasn't because like God couldn't do it. Cause our like power wasn't strong enough or something. Cause that had nothing to do with us. It was all about letting someone else experience what God was doing. You know what I mean? It mm-hmm. wasn't in the moment. I was like, we need, I need somebody else. <laughs> but it was just the Holy Spirit just showing up. It was amazing. She walked away. She didn't need her classes anymore. It oh, was that's crazy. Awesome. It was crazy. Then we end up with the CMI team from Kenya and we had like a team building day. And one of the girls Martha, who I love, and Martha, if you listen to this, I love you and I miss you. Uh, she told us in our family time group about her sister who had been sick for two years and who hadn't had her period in two years. And she was explaining it. And it was like the doctors, like different doctors thought that it was like a bacterial infection. But she, they'd been from doctor to doctor to doctor and nobody could come up with what it was. And I was like, it sounds like endometriosis. Yeah. I don't know. I'm getting a picture in my head. I don't know if it's the Holy Spirit or if it's just me putting my own story on yours. But I was like, do you want us to pray for you? Can we pray for Mercy, her sister? Can I lay hands on you? Can I, can I lay hands on your uterus? Basically, I asked right. her if I could put my hand on her uterus. <laughs> and... um. I was like, can we pray for healing for her through you? And she was like, yeah. So we prayed. And I mean, you guys, like, I felt something. I mean, I felt something. Like, really did. And I was like, I think she's healed. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. But tell us later. Like, tell us when we get to Eldorit. Because it was this was the first week, like the second day that we were there. And... um. She found, came and found me at the kids' camp. She said that her sister started her period, like, right after we prayed. Oh, wow. Right? Crazy. But, like, we were all excited. She's, yeah. She was only, like, 18, 17, but had been sick for two mm-hmm. years. Like, it, it's amazing, right? It's incredible. It is incredible. <laughs> um, but, like, it just kind of continued from there. It was, I don't have any explanation for it other than the Holy Spirit decided to do it. I don't know why. Because then I went to pray for an American on our team. And I told her about this because she was sick. She ended up in the hospital while we were um, in Kenya. And I felt like I was supposed to go pray for her. But when I went to pray for her, like I got stage fright. It was, it was a, I don't understand exactly what it was, except that like, and I I couldn't like really get into it, into my prayer. And the whole time I was like, this is just not going to work. And I was like, why is it that when I go to pray for an American who knows me and has a reason to doubt me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Why am I not believing? I wasn't even believing it. When I prayed for her. Right. And I was like, what is that? What is that? Because that's the same thing when I go to pray for someone for healing in America. Mm -hmm. Now, since we've been back, we got the chance to pray during our healing service for some people. And the first guy like totally got healed. Right. It was his back. And but I believed it then. Right. I didn't believe it when I prayed for Jackie. Jackie got healed. (laughs) Like, not through me. Later on in the trip, I mean, she got healed. Like, she had kidney stones, and then they went away. Um, And that was awesome. But when I prayed for her, I didn't believe that he was going to do it. Not then. Even in my prayer, I was like, if you want to heal her through medicine, Lord, we, you know. And I was just like, why did I do that? I do that all the time. Yeah. It hit me. While we were on the trip, because like, what is going on in me? Where it is my belief? Why do I stop believing when it comes to an American? But do I do believe for God a Kenyan. can't work in America. No, no, and especially not with the people on the trip. Of course, if, right. who of all people that should believe that the Lord can heal, it's us. 
because we're going out there praying for people to be healed and they're being healed. Why on earth would I, after God has healed two people so blatantly, so obviously, so that I can't refute it, then I can't pray for an American. Right. It's crazy. And it's, it's a, I think it was a self confidence thing. It was like, what are they thinking about me? And I'm like, why don't I think that? I don't, and I mean, it's like, I'm there to do a job in Kenya. It's like, this is what I'm here mm-hmm. for. I'm here to show up. I'm here to do whatever the Holy Spirit wants me to do. But when it comes to an American, I'm like, ah, they know me. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what that is. But I definitely struggled with it. I think it's something that a lot of us struggle with. All of a sudden, and not saying that it's a pride issue, but that comes in of what are they thinking of me? Yeah. Especially if it's another spiritual person. Yeah, it became... Would they have prayed this way? Yeah. There are other people in the room that are also on the team praying for healing for people. Mm -hmm. What, What did... Is it okay what I'm saying? What do they think of that? Like there are all of these very intimidating factors that are suddenly at play. Mm-hmm. Because I don't, I, I, <laughs> this is really sad, but I can't even pray over our family's meal. Mm. You get self-conscious. I do. Because you don't want to pray in front of Dusty. Yes. And every time he's like, would you please, I would really, I would really like to hear you pray. God is great. God is good. Oh, my God. Let us thank him for our food. That's what we're teaching the kids so that they can learn how to pray. So that's what I'm going to go for. But I do. I totally understand that whole, like, it's starting to come out of your mouth. Nope. mm Going to pull that back in before it comes out. I don't get how healing happens. But we don't, we don't have to get it. No, exactly. I don't have to get it for God to do it. <laughs> and we know that it's not coming from us. And then it doesn't matter Absolutely. what we say if we believe it and the person that we're praying with believes it. Yeah. Then it will happen. But I, let, I feel like I let my self-consciousness creep in yes. and it destroyed whatever the Holy Spirit was going to do. Yes. Not that he didn't do it for her later. He, she did. He did. You know, like, right. I don't know the pr- the purpose of her being in the hospital could have been that she was supposed to minister to a bunch of people, which right. they did, you know. So God, God's plan ultimately was done because I can't derail God's plan. No, no. But it really opened my eyes. Like it was a cup, you know, it's a couple days into the second week. I don't know. It was that weekend. We hadn't even started camp yet. But it gave me a lot to think about. Like, I was really, I was like, okay, Lord, let's talk about this. Because maybe this, this is what you needed to pull me away from my life to talk to me about was um, me letting my, I let myself get in between what God wants to do through me that only I can do. Right. Like, in my life on a daily basis with the people that I interact with and only, you know, like that I'm the person that's touching their life. You know what I mean? Right. Like I am derailing things that he wants to do through me because of my own self-consciousness and because I get in my head and I make it about me and about what are they, doesn't, it doesn't matter what they're thinking about me at that time. If they're getting the Holy Spirit they're getting, they're getting the Lord. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what it, I can, I should be able to make a fool of myself for the, for the Lord. But because I'm going to see these people all the time. <laughs> right. Cause they're in my daily life. Yeah. I you stop. Don't want to look like a fool because, in yeah. front of people that you see all the time. Every it's day. not wanting to take those steps. Right. And not wanting to, to get that far out there with somebody and then it not happen. Right. Or then you have to see them because what if they're like, "Mm." it's like what Joey was talking about on Sunday. He was talking about how the healing thing, you know, (laughs) like they went to go pray for people. Are you talking about 
Oh yes. Yeah, when they went to Germany. go pray for people at HEB, and they like he was like he was like not excited about this. But then, um, like as they got there, like Jeremy was like really souping them up. Like they were, he was like, like they All went right, to now HEB, go. and they were gonna like approach people and pray for them. Yes, like yeah. they they prayed and asked the Lord who they should pray for. They got a wheelchair and a guy in a boot, like in a in a cast, right. And he was like, they were like, okay, this is going to happen. This guy's going to get up and do like glory laps around the the store. You know, it was gonna, it's going to be amazing. They went in. They saw the guy immediately. They find the guy. They ask him if they can pray for him. And he said no. So it's like. <laughs> that was it. That's, and that was it. And that's the end of that. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. <clears throat> exactly. But it doesn't negate the fact that they saw yeah. what they saw, that the Lord yeah. gave them that. He gave because them it's up to the person who so, to pray for, and they went in and found that person. Right, right. And the person decided no. Right, right. And how many times did Jesus but, say, "Here's what you have to do"? And somebody how many said, "Oh, times I'm not going to do, do that." Do we say no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Truth. There it is. How many times do we say no? But how many times would the you like? How many times did the Lord tell me to do something, and the other person has the option of saying no, and then they have to be in my life every day of the year? You know. Like, that's what I'm saying. That's where my right. I realize that my self-consciousness right. is. Right. Because, I mean, I, I'm like, just going to say, I would never go to H-E-B yeah. and ask someone, can I pray for you? Can I lay hands on you? That's so outside of my wheelhouse. Like, it Don't would, say never. It wouldn't. I know. I should know God's that. God's going to ask you to do it tomorrow. He is, and I'm going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> the next time you do your grocery order. <laughs> But really, I mean, the only person like, that I will to, see you is need the to person for that her. brings the groceries yeah. to my car. <laughs> and we always talk and have fun conversations. So it wouldn't be too horrible, I guess. <laughs> but God, please don't ask me to do that. <laughs> but here's the thing. Like, I have trouble even talking to my family. Yes, me too. Especially this healing stuff that's happened and that's fresh. I have a hard time talking to even them about it. I'm amazed that I'm talking to whoever is listening to this podcast about it. Because it was not a sitting real, in front of us. It's true. But it was a real debate because I, I don't want to come off as saying that I did something special because I didn't. The Holy Spirit did it. I just opened my mouth. Right. And... Evidently got real forceful with my prayer language. <laughs> but that's more just what came out of my mouth. And it's not necessarily that the Lord was like, this is how it has to happen. Right. You know, <laughs> um, I went on a trip and I was obedient. And the Lord obedient. decided to do something. Yeah. But like can you word. can you be obedient without going on a trip? Exactly. That's the That's question. it right there. Boom. We'll yes. Just I, it when, right there. So, I believe that yes, I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think you can too. And I think, like I said, it's it's a learning. You're learning how to do it. And he's not going to say, well, you, you, it's the condition of your heart. It is. It and really here's is. The toss and he's up. not going to slap you down. Right. Here's the toss up with how we think people are going to perceive that Mm -hmm. because on sunday morning i'm not even gonna if i see someone going down to the altar and i feel like "Mm, they really would like someone to come pray with them i ain't gonna go i'm not on the prayer team (laughs) i'm not on the prayer team it's not my job it's It's not my job my job it's not my job no one ever asked me to do that clearly my job though yes (laughs) but i mean here you know yeah here's here's what i'm saying it's a it's a toss-up of if we step out in obedience mm-hmm. and I actually say, okay, I'll go pray with that person. Mm-hmm. Or you say, I'll lay hands on someone at H-E-B. Notice how I say you say you will but lay I hands would. on somebody. You totally would. I would. That's but something that I would do. The toss up <laughs> is either <laughs> they give us a weird look and it's a little <coughs> uncomfortable for the next couple of times that we see them. But our rapport really stays the same. Or we become known as the person of faith who is willing to step out and trust God in obedience. Right. Or you become like this amazing woman, Christine, on my trip. And she like, 
she's like, all I want is for people to not see me as much and just see the Lord. And I'm like, exactly. And they do, Christine. I just see Jesus when I look at you. Exactly. <laughs> She's amazing. And those are the people that are not afraid <laughs> to say yes. Yeah. And it's not unobtainable, and it's actually not that far out of reach. Right. Mm-hmm. I know. Okay. <laughs> I I've been I've been nervous before. Going on this trip has made my faith grow right. even more. That yeah. when I came back, I mean, how could it not? I mean, you could fight it. Well, you could fight it. It's it's not hard to do. That's the crazy thing. You can fight it and pr- pretend it never happened. Right. Yeah. And go back to the way things were. But coming back, you know, Amanda said earlier, people are having, she was having lots of dreams. Everyone on the team is having dreams like nightly, crazy, waking it's up. It's crazy. That's crazy. Praying in like, the spirit, all that kind of super, stuff. Super, super vivid dreams. So at church on Sunday. Yeah. I'm I'm there. The worship's going on, and I can't even concentrate because it's you know the spirit's so heavy with me. So I just start walking around, and maybe I need to pray for some people. I don't know. You know, I walked up to Joey, who's preaching that day, and I just put my hand on his chest and I start praying for him. Never done that before right? in my life. Would right. never dream to walk up to the person who's about to preach and be like, "Hey." Because I was like, what right? if he goes down? What I'm if, not an elder. I'm not a deacon. What I'm if I put him, you know, what if the Lord just puts him out? And I'm like, then what? <laughs> right? Somebody else is going to have to pray. Then what? <laughs> yeah. And, the last person to pray for him was Tim. Yeah. So. Oh, right. It's his fault. <laughs> and then I walked around the room and I found other people. And the Lord just highlighted and went over and prayed for people in the middle of worship, which I also don't do. Because I'm like, that's before I would have thought what, that's though? so As rude the recipient to just break of in. someone that has received that, I loved it. Like, I needed it. It was God saying, I see you, Mm -hmm. and you matter to me. And it was just that that thin line of, I don't go, I do. And then I got to pray for my supervisor at work on Tuesday when I went back to work. He was like, my stomach's kind of hurting. I was like, let's see what happens. And I, you know, I asked him, can I pray for you? And he's like, yeah. And I don't know if it got better. I forgot to ask him. (laughs) But... You know, and he kind of had a plan to go home early anyway. So I, right. think, I think even if he got better, he would have still gone yeah. home. But I don't know. And I am I care less now about what people think right. than I ever have in my whole life. And I think, Amanda, too, you're getting to that point. <laughs> I I'm think not. you are. Because I was the way you prayed on Sunday for, for healing for people in America was, was totally like t- what was, you yeah. did in oh, Africa. For so. Sure. But I was also given that job, like, this is what you're going to do. and But at that point, I'd also been walking with it for a week of, okay, God is doing something here, and I'm not going to stop it. Because when after I prayed for Jackie, I was like, mm, I right. got to fix this. Right. We need to talk about this, Lord. Yeah. So we talked about it for the whole week. <laughs> but you knew it wasn't right, and you took steps yeah. to well, remedy yeah. it. So I recently saw a show... Where there were two people and they were doing improv and mm-hmm. one was leading the improv and the other one was like, I ain't doing this. Mm-hmm. So he, the the first person would do something or say, then they like ask a question or try to include the second person. And like, nope. Like her response was no. He's like, okay, in improv, you don't say no. You say <laughs> yes. And yes. And yeah. So the oh, next, so the next good. thing, yeah. The next thing that they that they did, um, I think they were supposed to be farm animals or something. And he's like, hey, rooster, you want to eat the, I don't know. And she's like, yes. And and she started like flapping her wings. She's like, oh, this is kind of fun. Maybe I should say yes and to everything, which actually got her into a lot of trouble on the show. But but in the Holy Spirit realm. Yes. Yes. And. and? Yes. And <laughs> what if we all started saying Yes, and to the Holy Spirit, as long as the and follows what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do. Yeah. Yes, and and. <laughs> but seriously, that's such an incredible example of what we do and what our gut reaction is mm-hmm. when God tells us to do something right. way outside of our comfort it's zone. Outside of our comfort zone, we don't want to do it. We, we don't say look no silly. immediately, or we get an idea in our head and we're like. No, that person doesn't need me to come and do that. Right? Because we're like, that's not the Lord. 
talk yourself yeah, out of it. That's not the Lord. First the of Lord all, is not asking that you to was do just that. me that thought that thought, not mm-hmm. Jesus. That wasn't the Holy Spirit. That was not Father, Son, or Holy Ghost. It was just me. So we say no. But if we said yes, okay, Lord, and what's my next step? Yes. <laughs> and then yes. do it. I mean, that is all. That is all. Every time I prayed and something happened, in Africa was just saying, okay, let's do it. Okay. How is it? Yes. Okay. You ready to go again? Let's do it again. It is. It's one giant improv show. Right. <laughs> it's all an improv. Seriously. It's it, but like the Holy spirit is like the lead. Yes. And you're just, you're in good hands. So he's not going to let you fall. Right. And if you're doing something that he's put on your heart to do, I mean, what what's going to happen is either it's going to build your faith, build the other person's faith, or build both of your faith. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Even if you don't think that it went well, that person, it may have built their faith. Yes. And you're growing. Yes. Like we keep saying yes and then and. So. But you need, <laughs> you, it's fun. really, you just have to stop looking with your eyes. Yeah. Um, and walking, walking I'm half in the blind spirit. anyway, so that wow. should be easy. We'll pray for that here. You in want a us to fix it? <gasps> Do it. <'cause laughs> my prescription's up and I don't want to have to go back. <laughs> All right, guys. So we challenge y'all mm-hmm. over to say this yes next and week, to say yes, <laughs> yes and take yourself out of the equation, mm-hmm. put the Holy Spirit in the equation and say yes and. That's so good. And we need to hear stories. We do need to hear stories. Period. I will probably have some stories and some Facebook lives. All right. We love you guys. If you don't already follow us on Facebook at at Send Help Podcast. On Instagram (laughs) at Send Help Podcast. On Twitter at Send Help Podcast. (laughs) Go to our website at www.thesendhelppodcast.com. And subscribe. We love you guys. (laughs) We hope you have a blessed week. And we'll um, talk to you next time.